Hey YouTube, Ace Pinkter here today. Uh, a couple days ago I was asked to uh, make a beat for a friend. And when I said that I could, he picked up a microphone and just stood there staring at me like he was waiting for me to just crank one out. And I tried to explain to him, hey man, this you know this stuff takes time. It could take a few hours. And, you know, that didn't please him. He said, well shit, you know, what am I supposed to do if I don't like your beat? I just wasted an hour. Then it occurred to me. I said, you know, Reason has all this material behind it, all these Rex files, all these wave files, and you know, wave wave material out there is pretty easy to find if you know where to look. And if you got to recycle, um, you can you know create all the Rex files that you need, and not feel like you're ripping somebody off or you know being completely inauthentic. But it kind of struck me. What if there was a way to get quick access to all the Rex files and wave content that Reason has to offer. Then you'd be able to put together something almost like a, an instrument or a patch that you could use to produce a whole live set with just Reason 3.0. I'm talking about bass line, drums, fills, vocals if you got them, other samples, and a melody. We're going to do just that in this series of tutorials. I estimate this will take about 15 to 20 minutes, so uh, grab something to uh, drink or snack on and we'll get started. First thing we're going to do is create a mixer, ubiquitous component of all devices, and I'm going to create it inside a combinator. Notice the combinator is the only thing I got. I'm going to go ahead and create a, a, a compressor just because I know it will be used. It's going to catch uh, some of the higher outputs that we'll miss. And I'm going to set the attack all the way down because we're going to be catching a lot of drums. And it should be all right. I think this is the same settings I used last time. So this is what our objective is. We need to get maximum flexibility out of a single combinator. We need to be able to use as few keyboard keys as possible to produce a wide variety of us or you know different uh, samples, sound effects, drum patterns, and whatnot. The keyboard that I'm working with today is the Oxygen 8 from M Audio. It's pretty decent. It has eight knobs, 25 keys, two wheels, and one fader. And the first thing I'm going to do is put that fader to work. Once these uh, Rex loops are playing, I'm not going to shut them off. Um, there's a reason for that, which we'll see later. If you haven't done this already, just about every input or every um, control knob or fader has the option to be mapped to a remote override. And what this does, if you set it for learn from control surface input, I can actually hit one of the knobs and it will assign. See that? It will assign the fader to one of my control knobs. A lot of a lot of software has this feature. Make use of it. It's very handy. Now, um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this first. We're going to create two Rex drum loops. And I was asked to put together a hip hop beat, so I'm going to go ahead and take the first beat I find in hip hop. Actually, that was abstract hip hop, and now I'm going to take the first one from hip hop. Good deal. Okay, now we got those going. Channels one and two, respectively. We're going to make a crossfader between them using the programmer. First, take the key ranges of these Rexes and just boot them off to the right side. We don't want to use them, but we want to leave the receive notes on so that we still send pitch bend for information and such. Okay. Now, assign rotary 1 to the channel 1 level. If uh, if you don't have a keyboard, go get a keyboard. Uh, I, I can't tell you, um, you know, how many of reasons functions you're missing out on if you don't have one. And generally, the more knobs and buttons and faders, uh, the better. After after seeing this tutorial, you'll probably vote against getting any of the keyboards that have the uh, drum pads built in, because with reason you can pretty much 
do anything like that if um, if you've got a keyboard you can assign them to just about anything so to make our crossfader as you see um, right now rotary one is controlling both of these we're gonna simply reverse the values of channel one that's it now one knob controls left channel right channel see right channel left channel now some of these will be lucky enough to find that they mesh pretty well some of them won't alright the next thing we're gonna do is create an automatic kill what I mean by that is an instrument which when played sends a signal which will terminate our drums immediately now I could since I have a uh, keyboard here I could just assign button one to be a mute or I could map the mute button directly uh, using the remote override problem with that is it takes two presses one to turn it on one to turn it off if I wanna if I hope to achieve any kind of rhythm it's uh, pretty difficult to do what I want is to hit the key and kill the drums immediately and when I let go I want the drums to come right back this is how we're gonna do it I just created a subtractor and disconnected it take your mod envelope crank up the sustain all the way since we have two drum kits I'm gonna need a CV splitter I'm gonna take the mod envelope that we just made because I'm trying to send a negative value I'm gonna use the invert function to get two negatives I'm gonna route them to my mixer this is channel one and two level CV in I'm gonna crank these all the way up and the effect of that is should be if we can hear it the drums are on and as soon as I press a key, that's what I was going for. Now, I don't want to have every key that I hit function this way, so I'm going to limit this range to my first key in the first octave, C0. So, um, that's the only things that I'm going to work with today are C0 through C2 what I generally do is break the keyboard up in sort of virtual ranges the first button as we just saw is gonna kill my drums there we go it's gonna kill my drums I'm gonna use the next four buttons that includes the black keys to control our drum pattern and then I'm gonna use a few here to uh, control our fills and from then the next octave will be all samples and then I'll probably have it like a bass and a piano, organ, I don't know, you know, you can take your own liberties there, whatever instruments you want. It's very easy if you haven't worked with the uh, combinator, I'll demonstrate how to create these ranges very easy, very quickly. I'm going to create a piano. I like the NNXT's Grand Piano. Here it is. And now I'm just going to set the range for, say, C2 to C4. There we go. So now I should be able to play piano along with my drums. Great. Now we need a few extra things here. Uh, drum patterns alone are not enough to satisfy, especially just, just two drum patterns is going to get boring really quick. What I'm going to do is use Reason's excellent feature called Remote Override Edit Mode. What this means is any of these blue arrows, it represents a MIDI function which I can control. This is the same as right-clicking on a button and choosing Edit Remote Override Mapping. But in this mode you can see them maybe makes it a little easier, a little faster. I'm gonna assign the previous to the first black key and next to the white key immediately to the right of it. Then I'm gonna go 
to the second wacky.